All right, to recap, what are the different steps involved in supervised learning? First off, we determine the best representation to use for the relationship between x and f of x. So that's an algorithm, which algorithm to use, which model to use, that goes in choosing the representation. And then we determine which x to retain as in the form of features and which to discard. So this process is called feature engineering and feature engineering is a very, very, very important step and I cannot stress the importance of feature engineering enough. Oftentimes we see papers in machine learning um, conferences where the sole performance, um, the sole benefit of the performance is attributed to feature engineering. So we have to know which features are important and only retain them using noisy features, features that actually not are not contributing to the prediction problem can lead to really poor results even um, though the algorithm is well chosen and you have lots of data and the data can be clean but these noisy features can skew the algorithm to predict wrong. So keep this in mind. Gather a training set. Not all data is kosher. Some data could be wrong, could be um, noted down incorrectly, could be missing, could be noisy. So data values for these features could also contribute to your algorithm not performing well. So gather a training set, retain data which is clean and as much as possible discard data which is not clean. And of course, if data is an issue, if we don't have enough data, we also have to resort to including these noisy data and using that effectively to, to, to do the prediction. Select a suitable evaluation method. That's step three and that's also another very important step. Choosing the right evaluation method is key in understanding how your algorithm is performing. If you build a great algorithm and train it on very good data, but still you don't have the right evaluation method, then the algorithm cannot learn from its mistakes. Cannot You don't know how uh, well your algorithm performs. So a suitable evaluation method is key. So this is the second tab that we talked about, representation, evaluation, optimization. So choosing the evaluation is also an important part. And find a suitable learning algorithm from a plethora of available choices. Plethora being the operative word here. There, you won't imagine how many algorithms there are um, today, but oftentimes you can group them into types of algorithms. And you want to actually fit the right type of algorithm for your, your problem. And if you don't end up choosing the right type of algorithm, then you are going down a rabbit hole, a path which is not really a uh, path which can lead you to success so you have to back up and then choose another algorithm and that will take some effort so if you can make the choice early uh, well in advance and are on the right path then you will end up getting better performance results feature engineering is the key feature engineering is very 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 important and you will learn more of this in programming assignments but keep this in mind when you go out in the real world and whenever somebody tells you that this algorithm is not performing well um, this would be the first thing I would try try to use the features that you have effectively remove features add features construct features um, that are functions of your existing features manipulate them into doing what you would like them to do um, this is more of an intuition and more creativity is required. Um, understand the properties of the task at hand. Involve domain experts. So suppose you are doing a prediction or biomedical um, prediction task, trying to find whether there is a cancerous tumor in um, an MRI. Then for that, you need an expert in that field to help you with that. So without that, if you construct features which are not really meaningful to the algorithm, then it will not give you great results. How the features interact with each other is also important. Uh, sometimes redundant features, too cor if they are too correlated with each other, then you don't need both of them. Uh, only one of those two correlated features is enough. Um, sometimes features don't correlate at all with the output, and which means that you can completely discard them. And these 
wrong or incorrect or noisy or useless features tend to limit the algorithm's uh, ability and um, uh, even and you can keep playing with more complex and complex algorithms and still not achieve the right the required or the desired performance just because your features are not chosen correctly and machine learning is an iterative process don't expect to try an algorithm and expect it to perform great just right off the bat it is almost never the case um, this is something i tell my students always whenever they tell me that something is not working because it eventually works you have to go through the iterative process understand the features understand the domain that you were working on experiment with different kinds of features different combinations of them and uh, different algorithms and how see how they interact and just uh, understand the process and uh, what you're trying to do and with more of it then you will require less um, time spent on the iterative process but nevertheless it is still needed all right let's look at a very simple example uh, sample machine learning algorithm let's say a two-way classification problem which is sort of like a standard machine learning task and you want to only learn lines which means you have restricted your representation to be from this set from this set of lines and um, a line you want to draw a line between these two sets of points and then say that the line separates these two classes evaluation number of misclassified examples that sounds reasonable right so if you have lots of misclassified examples your algorithm is performing poorly if it is, has fewer then it's better it has none then awesome great now for the optimization part so we have discussed representation evaluation now the optimization you want to find the line that separates these two sets of points the best you want to find the best line so for that what do you have to do you have to find the values of a b and c that correspond to the best line so this is what you are actually solving and that's the optimization part so the optimization like I told you before optimization and representation sort of work in tandem because representation your choice of representation tells you what the, what is the optimization problem that you are solving so here it's a line so there are these parameters a B and C that you are going to find as part of the optimization okay to our example blue dots and red dots and um, blue dots are on the top red or on the bottom if there is any confusion so blue let's say good credit red circles bad credit high risk so this is your prediction problem and you have the line a x plus by plus c equal to zero separating these points nicely and there is a x plus by plus c greater than zero which is everything top of the line where the blue dots are existing and ax plus by plus c less than zero is bottom part of the line where all the red dots are are existing and what are your features here age and income the x and y axis so it's actually x1 and x2 axis to be honest because you are trying to use these two features to predict the credit so these few two combination of these two features is actually your theta point so let's say less than 40 of age and less than way less than 15k of income is the bottom most red dot so that's the data point so you're plotting the data based on these features and the color is the y label whether it's good credit or bad credit okay how do machine learners solve this problem Try different lines until you find the one that separates the data into two. Is that like a solution? It's not an algorithmic solution for us computer scientists, right? A more plausible alternative is begin with a random line. Repeat until no errors. So begin with a line and keep changing the line such that you arrive at a line when there are no errors at all. If such a line exists and you find it, then you have a solution. 